So Lex and I have been working together for almost a year now, right? And we've gone from the, we, we both started with the Aqua Provac. Then we upgraded to the Mighty HV60 Spider. And then we upgraded to the Prospector 500. So I'll let Lex, so Lex, with the Aqua Provac, pros and cons, what were they? Pros, it's very, very mobile. So it is small, you can fit it anywhere. You can fit it in a small car. Um, you could, you know, it is very, very mobile friendly. Um, Cons has a very small water uh, reservoir. It's only like a gallon and a half. Um, so you do refill often. And uh, also, it doesn't have any heat. So you're stuck with cold water. So on that one, so he said, so for me, I never saw the heat being a problem. And so we upgraded not to the HV60, but into the Prospector 500, that's when I was, oh, heat does play a big role. Now for me, the biggest drawback to the Aqua Provac was simply just how little of water it can hold. Now don't like, we did hundreds of interiors. We've used it hundreds and hundreds of times. So when we're saying these little minute things, it's not like, oh, well, I was gonna buy the Aqua Provac, but he said it's a small tank, so now I'm not gonna. We literally did hundreds of vehicles two or three vehicles a day with the Aqua Provac. With the Aqua Provac. Now the biggest upgrade I would say to do to the Aqua Provac is the... The longer hose. The longer hose, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So th forgot. with the standard one, I think it's like a 15 foot hose. Yeah. But they sell separately, they separately sell a 22 foot hose. So like it's still not the most ideal scenario. Like you can't keep it in your van. But you can keep like in the corner of a vehicle depending on what vehicle you're working on. And at least you can keep it in the corner and just move the hose around versus with a 15 footer, you have to move the, the, the unit around to get to all the area. So at, at a minimum, purchase that 22 foot hose. That way you have enough space or, or at least more room to walk around the vehicle. Um, any other drawbacks to the Aqua Provec? Or, or pros and cons to the Aqua Provec? Uh, no. I mean, it has a lot of pros, you know, it's very easy to maintain, it's very small, you know, it's super easy to clean out the filters and then, the, you know, the reservoir, just pop it open, dump it out, you know, you put some water back in, yeah, it's, it's super easy to... Now, the way we would refill, and we still do this, we still do this now even with, with the Prospector 500, is we carry a five-gallon tank of, uh, of diluted, of, rin of, our, of our rinse water, mm -hmm. that way, when, so like, with the Aqua Provac, right, it's only like a gallon and a half, so we would finish, we would extract, right? It would, we, we'd run out of water, we'd have to dump the water out. So we go dump it out, put it back in, and then we'd go get the five gallon water tank, fill it up. Like we don't go get the water hose, fill it, yeah. put, the, put the rinse, mix it. No, it's like, it's already comes rinsed in the five gallon water uh, tank. So now we just literally pour it in there and get back to work. Now, a drawback, like let's say we're working on a a, uh, a, a Toyota 4Runner, Toyota 4Runner, right? Let's say we're, we're shampooing the seats, the carpeting, and the floor mats. Let's say it's bad. Like it's like it's like it's bad. How many refills are we gonna do? We're gonna go through about four to six refills. Four to six refills, right? So that's doing multiple passes on the like multiple passes, right? To make sure is 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 getting the job done right. Four to six passes. Now we upgraded to the HP60 Spider, which that one to give them the breakdown of the of the of the. That Sorry. one has a you know, heating component. It also has a bigger tank, about five gallon tank. Um, and I believe it has a little bit more suction power, but not nothing too noticeable. Yeah, but the big thing is the, the bigger water capacity that it can take. So with the Aqua Provac, it was 1.5, let's say a gallon and a half, to where the HP60 Spider is now five gallons. So what would take us, what you said, four to six times? Yeah. Four to six times on the Forerunner would now take us maybe once or twice once, yeah. on the HV60 Spider, right? So that's probably the biggest difference in terms of those two. Now again, like on a single, like on a one-off instance, using the Aqua or the HV60, you're gonna get great results. Like it's, it's you can get great results. It's just, if you're trying to do multiple vehicles per day, that's when things start to change. So that's why we upgraded from the HP60 Spider now to the Prospector 500. But before we get into that, pros and cons of the HP60 Spider. Pros, heating component, uh, bigger water tank, um, and that is about it. Cons, it gets very heavy. 
So you really do not want to keep bringing it down and putting it back up in your in your mobile unit, especially if it's just you. I mean, it you know, one person can do it, but do that two to three times a day, every day for a whole week. Um, you're gonna get tired of doing that. Yeah. So when you add the water, it gets pretty heavy. And again, if you're putting it like on a truck or something. Just you're not in a good leverage position to bring that that the extractor down and up every single time. So there is a huge setback to that. If you don't like, it's gonna be a big pain in the rear end to to every day, not every day, but multiple times throughout the day, bring it down, put it up to get the job done. On top of that, again, like the weight wise, like you know, not everyone's gonna be strong enough to to bring the unit down and up. So that that's gonna be a drawback as well. And I would say for me though, even though it has a heating component, it does take a bit of time to heat up. Yeah, so they always say, they say to put warm water in the in the basin and it'll heat up in about 10 minutes. So if you put cold water, that's gonna take like 15 to 20 minutes to fully heat up. Yeah, so, yeah, so it's so, not quick. So that is a drawback. And also you do lose the heat, not quickly, but it, the heat does, Decrease yeah. substantially as you start it. Yeah, depends it, it, how much, how often you're squeezing that trigger. So, so even they say, they say to do about uh, one dry pass for every wet pass that you do. Meaning you're squeezing the trigger, you're going down, you release the trigger, and you go up, and you do that over over and over again. That way, the the heating component could you know constantly heat up the water that you're about to use next. Um, yeah, so if you if you you know squeeze the trigger, you're not letting go of it, and you're just constantly using water, um, it's gonna get you know a little bit toward the warm side and not stay consistently hot throughout the extraction process. Yeah, so it's not like you're just gonna go and like just extract it the entire time, and it's just gonna stay hot the entire time. Like you have to kind of balance out how many passes you're doing, pulling the trigger, releasing the heat versus like letting it heat up again. So again, to the Aqua Pro Back, that's 475. Pros and cons. The HV60 Spider that was seventeen hundred dollars. Pros and cons, right? So you're not gonna find a unit that's just like, oh man, this one just hits the nail on the head every single time. Because now the higher you go up with the with the extractors, yes, you get better features. Yes, you get a better build. Yes, you get better everything. But now at the biggest drawback is the price. Aqua Pro Back four seventy five. The HV60 Spider seventeen hundred. And now moving forward to the Prospector five hundred, the the unit itself is like two thousand. Like twenty seven. Twenty-seven. Mm -hmm. Allegedly, it's like twenty-seven hundred dollars. So as you go up, it's gonna get better and better, like better features, better everything. But the price just starts going up and up and up. So, Aqua Pro Vac, pros and cons. HVC Spider, pros and cons. Um, any other drawbacks? Now the the with the HVC Spider and the Prospector Five Hundred, they're both on a scientific sapphire upholstery tool, which makes a huge difference. Now the just a, a quick caveat to that is. Well, you explain the sapphire tool. So the sapphire tool is a tool made specifically for upholstery to not oversaturate or overwet the uh, the upholstery. Um, if you get a piece of cloth and you use like, the standard tool, um, you you notice that with the the jet nozzle tool, which is the standard one, once you squeeze the trigger, the water will actually go through the fabric into the other side. So what that means is you're not only getting the the upholstery wet, you're getting the cushion behind it wet. Um, so that takes one longer to dry. Two, it also uh, causes a lot more wicking, especially that foam is soiled. Now, with the upholstery tool, the Sapphire Scientific one, um, it has it's a jetless tool, meaning it doesn't just shoot out water. What it does is it has has if you look under the head, it has three ports. It has one vacuum port, water port, another vacuum port, and that water port, all it does is it brings water to the surface of the tool. So if you look at look at it like the vacuum tool the, the head is like this the water is just on the surface it's not shooting out it just stays on the surface and it quickly gets sucked back in um, so now if you use that tool on a piece of cloth you will notice that no water goes through the uh, the upholstery it stays on top so for one you're not oversaturating uh, for two you have less chance of wicking for three the, the upholstery will dry much faster now the drawback to that though is one it's more expensive the, there's two, at least the one that we saw, there's two units. There's the uh, one that has the adjustable PSI on the hose itself and the one that doesn't. The one that has the adjustable PSI was like 700 and the one that doesn't have the adjustable PSI is I think 500. Now, uh, we have both of them. The one with the adjustable PSI is on the Mighty HVCD Spider because that one doesn't allow you to adjust the PSI on the unit, so you have to do it at the hose. 
and the Prospector 500, we got that without the adjustable PSI on the, on the hose because on the unit, you're able to adjust the PSI. Now, overkill, possibly, yes, but it, that's, you know, it's like, it's just pro, pros and cons to your operation. And so it's the price, 500, 700, not cheap. Two, it doesn't fit every single unit, so you kind of have to Frankenstein it a little bit, kind yeah. of. You just gotta make sure you have the right size uh, vacuum hose, which is a 1.5 hose added. And third is that it does go through a lot more water because with the scientific upholstery tool, it's always ejecting water and always vacuuming. So you never let go of the, uh, well you can, but it, you will go through more water with the upholstery tool versus your standard tool that it comes with. So that's also, like some, pe some people were commenting like, well, how do you go through so much water? It's like, well, just the tool that we're using, it just outputs way more water versus the standard upholstery tool or the standard tool that it comes with. Yeah, and it just takes a little bit of experience because with that tool, you could uh, uh, extract going up and down. So especially if you're new to using that tool, you're gonna go through more water than you usually do just because you're so used to just pushing the trigger and releasing a lot of water and vacuuming up. With, and uh, you're gonna do that a lot more than when you have experience, you're gonna notice that by holding the trigger and extracting up and down, you'll actually get through the vehicle much faster. So with a little bit of experience, you won't use as much water, but you will still use more than the standard tool. Uh, another actually uh, pros to the Sapphire tool is it doesn't make a mess. Um, when you're using a standard tool, as soon as you squeeze the trigger on the upholstery, what the first thing you will see is just water splashing to the side, just everywhere. If you're doing a headrest, the water will splash to the headliner. Uh, with the upholstery tool, since the water stays on the tool right underneath it, you get no splash, no mess, no drip, so you don't have to wipe down the seat or center console or whatever you're extracting uh, as you're extracting. Yeah, so that is a big one too. So that's like yeah, that's that's a huge huge benefit. Like not worrying about the excess waste that goes there because you, you extract and oh crap, I gotta vacuum that up now. With the upholstery tool, like you get absolutely none of that. Alright, so that's pretty set in stone. So now going to the Prospector 500, we'll touch on that shortly, is that, okay, look, it's an amazing tool. The biggest thing though, I'll just go, I'll, go, I'll go straight to the cons, because again, one, price. Two, it's a much, much, much bigger unit. You're not gonna be bringing this thing down and up every single time, like it just, you're not gonna do that, right? It is considered a portable extractor meant for the carpet cleaning industry, so it's meant to actually be moved around, go into buildings and such, but for us, like we're not gonna bring it down, like we're just not gonna do that. It's twice as big as the H360 Spider. It's a 12 gallon tank on both the basin and the and the and the waste. Two quarter. And it's a two quarter machine, meaning it requires a lot more power to run. So you can't run it off a 2,000 watt generator. It has to be like on us on an 8750 watt generator. So I'll let you break down the specs of the Prospector. Yeah. So the Prospector has a 500 psi uh, pump that you can regulate the pressure all the way down to zero. Um, it has a 12 gallon recovery and solution tank. Um, it also has two dual three-stage vacuums, um, so it's pretty powerful, um, it can hold a lot of water, and uh, oh, it also has a very, very strong uh, heating component, uh, which keeps the water hot throughout the whole extraction process. Also, it only takes about six to ten minutes to heat up uh, cold water at that. Yeah, so with this one, that, that's what I noticed like, when I went to go use it for the first time, like it was legitimately hot. Like it, it stayed hot throughout the entire process to where, you know, with the, with the HPCD spider, you kind of have to like, okay, let me, let me be a little cautious of the heat that I'm, that I'm extracting, let me be a little cautious. With the Prospector, it just, it's heat, like it's, like, it's hot. It's, it's gonna stay hot. You can work, it's like, it's, the vacuum is way stronger. The, like, it is just a beast of an animal as an extractor. But again, at the price point, at the size, there's a reason why a lot of us, like not many detailers are gonna run this, this setup because it's just like, it's so, like it's so, it's a mammoth. Like it's, it's not meant for, it's overkill for detailing, but be, like because of tank, because of strength, because of vacuum, like it, it's a good fit for what we were looking for. Um, other than that, there's no console. It's just, it's huge and it's costly at that point. Huge, costly, and it requires a lot more power. So again, like one solution, five problems. So like, oh yeah, I bought the Prospect that they got. Okay, well now set it up in your van, right? Well now make sure it's on a reel. All right, well now make sure your generator can with we can can handle the power output, right? So it's like it's not just getting the extractor. It's like you have to put everything else in place to make sure that the extractor is gonna run correctly. So we'll end it right here. Any last minute pros and cons? To, uh, to yeah, so on the uh, the Aqua Provac and the HP6 Spider, it's just one out one prong, so you can hook it up to any standard outlet. 
Uh, if you do happen to get the prospector and you're not running on a generator, you're relying on your customer's power, um, you're going to need to plug it into two separate outlets and two separate circuits. So an outlet usually has two plugs. You do not want to plug it in those two because it'll trip the breaker. You want to plug one in to one circuit, find another outlet, and plug the other cord to that circuit. That way the trip is over. Yeah, and, and it is cumbersome. Like this is a, again a, a portable carpet extractor. So like, that's what you do. Like that's what like, you have to find two outlets because if you put it on the same one, it's gonna it's gonna break. It's gonna break something. Like it's just it's a lot of power that it's handling. Um, but other than that, again, each unit has its pros and cons. Each unit is great at something, right? The Aqua Provac is great for what it is. The HP City Spider is great for what it is. The Prospector 500 is great for what it is. But again, there's no one that says like, oh, check more, check more, check more, check more. Like. It's the perfect one. It's like each one has its pros and cons. You have to outweigh which one fits your needs. Prospector 500, probably overkill. Don't recommend it, but you have to make that decision to see what's gonna be best for your operation. So, all right, good video. So.